I will start. Uh, I will start with a quote. When you have a choice between right and kind, be kind. Again, I will say, when you have a, when you have to choose between right and kind, be kind. Um, I want to tell you a story. I think I told you before. Maybe the story is about this boy who is eight years old. His sister, who is two years old, has a genetical disorder. So it's like so. The doctors found that the only way she can be cured was that the boy has this uh, had an antibody for that disorder. But the boy, so the, if you trans, if you give the blood to the kid, the small girl from the boy, they, the girl can be saved. So they went to the boy, eight year old, and said, "You have to give your blood to the your sister." And he, for like, he took some time, and then he said, "Okay." So the time came. He was the boy was. On, in the in the in the bed lying, and the girl was the next, and they were trying to they were taking the blood out of him, and giving to the girl. After a while, this boy was very very sadly asked the doctor, "When am I when am I going to die?" Because the boy thought that he's a blood he's giving is that they will take his blood and he will die. He says, "Was well, this is just a point of blood?" So that's the story of this boy who had like th- he was giving his life for his sister. Uh, do you know any, do you anybody knows that verse John fifteen thirteen? Anybody knows John? What is John fifteen thirteen? John fifteen thirteen says the greatest thing you can do, the love you can give is give your life for your friend. So, but I'm not talking about that today. I am talking about Galatians five twenty two. Can you please open Galatians? Galatians. Everybody knows that our church, our kids always go and stand in the front and says that verse. For the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, patience, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Again, such thing there is no law. I was I prepared some other message today, but on the when on eve of I when I heard the story of the, the what happened in Florida, I got very sad about it. Like how can a boy kill so many innocent kids? I said, what is wrong with these people? So and. Today my message is be kind. We 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 live in an era where kindness is not like appreciated anymore. I will say that uh, we as we go and like we go to church and say, God give me this gift of speaking in tongues or give a gift of prophecy. But how many have said that give me a gift the grace of kindness? How many have prayed and said? We, we, we can go and help our believers, we can. How many went and go and help an unbeliever? How many you pursue to help somebody else? <coughs> do we do that? How many we do that? You know the thing is that fruit of the spirit is not an attitude or trait. You know, it's not. It's an evidence that Holy Spirit is working in you. You know, God, when God showed <coughs> kindness, He showed kindness to everyone. When you open Jeremiah, 31 3 it says Lord appeared to us in the past saying I have loved you with an everlasting love I have drawn you with loving kindness it says that when you think about it it says that I love you but do you know whom he's speaking to in Jeremiah God in that he's drawing his loving kindness <coughs> to the righteous you think no in that he was he was talking to the people who rebelled against the Lord so that means God is kind to the wicked. In that verse we can say, the act is act of kindness is not for people who are nice, but for everyone. You know, you know most of the conflict doesn't start from outside. You know, it starts from inside. James uh, 4.1 says that. Where do you think? I'm using a lot of words because I want to use words in the world because it talks everything. So that's why I, I'm not a big public <coughs> taking too many verses, but this message I need the verses. Where do you think all those appalling war and quarrels come from? Do you think they just happen? Think again. They come out because you want your own ways, fight for it deep inside yourself. The battle is we are people are battling inside, not outside. Your behavior is mostly derived from what is inside you, not other people do here. Some people say, oh, he did something to Daswarabi. No, it's your battle inside. 
when that's why it says the fruit of the spirit when you have the holy spirit in you you will never have to doubt it says when jesus says that in luke 631 love your enemies do good to them okay and he says lend them without expecting to get something from them it says not love your friends it says and treat them love nicely he says love your enemies because it says that like we have to follow the example of our god you know he is kind to the ungrateful are you kind to the ungrateful are you kind to people who were mean to you and and the thing is that we take it for granted the kindness god has given us you know we take it and we don't we don't give a second thought about it and then and but the god gives everything it says that he in matthew says that god causes his son to rise on the evil and the good since reigns to the righteous and the unrighteous he gives to everybody he doesn't he doesn't have any like difference between us he still gives to everybody and so why can't we so why does he give to so that in romans it says that it can lead to you for your repentance he gives them this all things so that they will come back to him and there are when you think about the word kindness the kindness word comes from word called kin k i n kindness right kin kin means blood relatives you know kin means blood relatives so that means kindness you, you will give everything like when you when you have a relationship we also used to make fun when we were like college kids like he is my best friend i will give his kid, my kidney to him a relationship based on how much you can give your kidney to your friend <laughs> you know give your kidney to save his life so you know, how how good your friend is can you give your kidney to your friend so it's kind of like that so but blood relative you will give your kidney to our blood relative right <laughs> but uh, so kindness is to give like you give to somebody who is close to you without anything it's so easy to say i'm i'm exact i can say very nicely i can hear and say but can you give it so there are some some points about this kindness through kindness we can show compassion right through kindness we can show and i want to use some bible stories for compassion you know in a in a in a society where eye for an eye or you say it's you as a society for eye for an eye us has the biggest prison population in this world 24% of prison is in us the most death sentence people die of death sentence is in us of any civilization because they believe in eye for an eye anybody who does evil should be killed. and i'm not i'm not being political but this is that like you have to sentence but when you think about it does it do you have to do that if you when you, uh, my favorite character in bible is after this david is a amazing if you read about david it's so much stuff you can learn from him david had a chance to kill saul think about david he was running away from saul and he one time he had a chance that saul was in a cave is all they could have gone and killed him right but he didn't kill him and i will say that if he had killed him he would have said Of course he was supposed to be killed because he was killing him all he was going after him why can't he to save himself be killed nobody would have said anything but that's the difference between ordinary and greatness you know that's the difference when you are great you do extraordinary things and soul spared his life and and soul says that think about soul says that he says that to him after that you are going to be the king he saw in him so the enemy is telling him and and then and then how he helped soul's son uh memphi kudesh i was like i don't know what's so long name like you need to think about you call your son like that come here and give me a glass of water by the time you are <laughs> it's too long name but but memphi if you know about memphi memphi kudesh uh um, he huh memphi boshe boshe i'm sorry i'm i'm it's so difficult like i don't know how they come with this kind of name but yeah um and he was a crippled son and when jesus david heard about his story he called him and asked him to sit next to him on the table you know he's a king think about it if you think about normally you say oh that's crippled he 
an enemy son on his table. You could have said, oh, this guy needs help. Put him in a, some room and give him some food, feed him. That's a good act. I will say that was a good act. If somebody says, he would have said, oh, give him some food and feed him some and give him a room, take care of him. Nobody would have said anything. But that's the difference between ordinary and extraordinary. You know, he made him sit next to on his table. That's compassion. And, and through kindness, we have compassion. Then other, and for that, can you open the verse Titus 3, 4, and 7? I have Titus 3, 4, and 7. Um, for, for after the kindness and love of God, our Savior towards man appeared. 4 and 7. 4 to 7. Sorry. 4 to 7. <laughs> Titus 3, 4 to 7. Not, uh, you cannot put it together, no? no. Uh, so can you read it, somebody? <laughs> but after the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by grace, by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And this it says that by his grace, only through his grace, we can become the heir. Like through kindness and compassion, only through that. Because God gives us the grace and we have to give to others. In, and other words, is kindness takes action. When you have truly experienced kindness, okay, you know, kindness in, of God in your life, we cannot, we have to, we, we will give action, we will you have to act like that. We cannot stop ourselves. Seriously, that will happen. Like Jesus says, Jesus said, the one who has forgiven much is the one who loves much. You know, and the kindness of God is something that becomes contagious, you know. Even in those times when some something wrong, somebody does that, and you are so hurt, you still will show kindness. And it's it's difficult, it's difficult, but only through the grace we can do that. Nothing else. Not for human. We have no mind. We have no. Mind. So, like when you think about it, we are all like the Memphi Pudesh. Oh, he's like a cripple like him. We have crippled in different scenarios in our life, you know, but through God's grace, like we are all got covered by people, situations, and like a lot of stuff in your life. We are broken hearted, people are hurted you, but how to come out through that and show kindness? Because some people say, like when I think about the boy in Florida, what was the evilness in him which led to kill these people? What is that thing? What makes somebody become like that? Because he didn't, maybe he didn't, nobody showed him kindness. Nobody was nice to him. I don't know. But it's so sad like why people do that. But we, people can hurt you. But still you can show your compassion to others. And then, like, sometimes if you, like, kind, like in when I was working in in India, I was like a, in, when I was like 24 years old, um, I had I got a like a promotion in my company to to take I was promoted to be an inventory like a in charge of it. There was a lot promote uh, there was a lot of more than hundred employees under him. I'm this young boss trying to act smart. So and then uh, there was this man who was a good employee. He used to. He used to come always late, he was absent for work, but he was a good employee. But he had some family problem which led to him coming late. And I warned him, don't come late all the time, like, you know, you should come on time. Then sometimes he was, he doesn't come to work for some, some one day he didn't come to work. And I was very upset, he called and I said, you're fired. I just fired him, he was, he pleaded to me, no, please don't. I said, I warned you so many times, I fired him. And this job is pretty <laughs> difficult to get. This is like a 500 employee company. And he will lose the job. He will lose a lot of stuff. So he pleaded to me, but I didn't care. And I fired him. And I was right. He was, he, would, he deserved it. And nobody said anything to me. He said, my boss said, good. You fired him, he deserved it. 
After many years, I was working here. One of the employees in my workplace, she, she in a restaurant, she was giving free food for some people. Like you know, friends giving some coke and some extra. He she didn't charge. He was not stealing and all. So my boss saw in the camera. He called him and said, her and said. Uh, that's a fireable offense. You gave somebody for free, I think you're doing for you are fired. And and then she she started crying. So please don't fire them. Never do it again. So I said, no, you are done something wrong, you are fired. And this that's we that's a logical thing. So he told me, can you give her her balance and let her go? So she stood me, she was crying. I said, please, I will never do it again. I said, no, I will give you a chance. <laughs> I said, you are not fired, I will keep you. She's worked for another three years. She never did it again. Sometimes we have to be rough. We have to be kind and right. We have to be gracious to other people. It's not like always be what it is. And kindness is powerful, you know. Power is evil, you know. Power is evil. Power makes you evil. That's it. If you look at history, power makes you evil. You know, like with Hitler, Stalin, any guy, like their power, power begets evil. It's the more you are powerful, the more evilness you have. They say that. So how you come out of that is through the Holy Spirit in you. And the scripture says that, like, when you, in Colossians 12, 13, can you read Colossians 12, 13? Colossians 12, 13, it says that, Colossians 12.13 Oh sorry, I'm saying 3.12.13, I'm so sorry 12 to 13, 3.12 to 13 Yeah, it says that Therefore, as God chosen people, holy and dearly loved Clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility and greatness Bear with each other and forgive one another If one of you have grievance against another, forgive as God forgives you You know that God has invited you and me to be the channel of his loving kindness. Be a channel. And each of us, us have the opportunity every day of our life, every week, to channel that to other people. People, you can have the power to do some. You, everybody has power, some power, to do or control other people. But what is your, can you do bitterness or kindness? You have a choice. If one story, in, again I back to David, is David's Nabal and Abigail story. Not many people talk about that story. I don't know why. I've never heard too much. If you know about the story about David, David uh, was in the wilderness. This is incident ha happened after he spared Saul's life. He was in the wilderness. And because he is built with this lot of people, he needed food. So he asked his uh, men to go. This Nabal is a very wealthy guy. He had thousands of sheep and cattle, he was very wealthy. He said to, <coughs> David said, go to Nabal and ask him to give me some food, right? Because he helped last time, we tell him that when we were there, when he had was like, you know, that he was ra is grazing his sheep, he helped them, helped the shepherds, and also he, he is expecting something in return. So David said, go and ask Nabal for something. And what did Nabal did to his people? He said, who is David? Who is Jesse? I don't know him. Why would I spare my food to these people? No, I will not kill my animals, slaughter my animals for David. Tell him go. Now think about it. David, this is going to be a king, you know. And he's a powerful guy. You Nobody can talk to him like that. <laughs> David got very angry. Of course, he's designed, he's right to be angry, right? He said to his men, sharpen your swords. Go and kill every man of that place. Every man. But when he, when Abigail, the wife of Nabal, saw what happened, what it does, immediately she knew. She was a smart lady. She immediately knew. She told his, his uh, servant, pack as much food as possible. He put a lot of food. Go towards David. Well, he's, David would be coming towards him, right? So go as fast as possible. Then, I will come after him. And, and then those the servants reached David, she saw him, she fell on his feet and told him that you are like, she has forgiveness for her husband's sin. You know, and she's telling me you are going to the king, have compassion, like that. 
and David had the all the he had the right to go after Nabal, but no, he didn't do it. He didn't do it. He said, "I listened to you." Okay, he said because of you, I'm sparing their life. You know that sometimes people do bad things to you. You don't have to go and take a revenge. You know what happened to Nabal after that? Nabal, when Abigail went back to Nabal and told him what happened, he, he, stopped, he became very like a dead silent and within 10 days he died. God gave him punishment for what he did to David. David didn't have to do that. In your life, you don't have to pursue anger against somebody. You know, God will take care of it on his own time. It's not like he will, maybe he will make his mind change, nothing. But you don't have to go after it. It's just that God, it's, it's, in the end I will say that maybe, maybe we resolve in the, our cult, cultivation of the fruit of kindness to seek the inexhaustible resource of be gentle, yet dynamic Holy Spirit, whom God has so graciously poured out on us to manifest kindness. For it is not by might, not by power, not by our spirit, says the Lord. I, I want to end this um, message with the serenity prayer. You know the serenity prayer? When, have you heard that? Like, have you anybody heard the serenity prayer? Yeah, prayer of serenity. Grand, so I want to end it with that serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to, courage to change the thing I can and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a path to peace, taking as he did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right, if I surrender to his will, that I may reasonably happy in this life, and, sub, and sub, sub, supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful time. Thank you for the time.